Hello, everybody, and welcome to Why We Huddle. This is a special episode as it is our 10th episode. Didn't think we'd get here quite this quickly, but we have. After spending two weeks in Atlanta, we're heading to Oklahoma and to Stillwater to talk about the Oklahoma State Cowboys. And welcome to the show. Um, here we have Calvin of the CGA Tour. How are you doing today? Doing good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Okay, and thank you for coming on and being willing to tell us all about, you know, the Oklahoma State Cowboys and what that program means to you, what it means in general. And of course, can't wait to hear about the CGA Tour. Yeah, no, no, thanks so much. Yeah, the, uh, and we've been podcasting for a while, so excited to talk to you a little bit, you know, learn more about, uh, you know, basically the why we huddle um, and give everyone all the news and notes about the CJ Tour and kind of the history as well. Awesome. So let's go ahead. Let's get into it. Um, for those that may not know Oklahoma State too well, maybe from SEC country like me, or maybe if they're from, you know, out west, what can you tell us about the Cowboys? Yeah, it's Oklahoma State. Uh, we have proudly, we have a historic wrestling program. I mean, that is, if you're talking athletics, you're talking Oklahoma State sports, you're talking a historic wrestling program of more than 30 national championships um, in wrestling alone. Now, as a, as a university, we have more than 50 you know national championships and in, in all respective sports combined, which I, th I believe I'm right in saying this is either like, I think it's the number one in the Big 12. It might not be anymore with the new new guys in and a bunch of the Pac-12 schools joining, but I mean, a, a historic program that is for the last decade beating Texas um, more times than not um, in football, which I don't think would fit the national narrative all that much. But maybe now with the whole kind of college football rankings and how that all NCAA settlement came out, maybe people are knowing Oklahoma State a little bit more as a tier one program and we'll put that on the side of our stadium i'm joking of course but with that being said um yeah i mean a historic program won national championships in football basketball baseball granted basketball and football we're talking back in the the 40s and you know baseball we're talking in the 50s and but we're uh, a really really good program that i think now with the whole new big 12 is a chance to really take over the whole entire conference you know i mean i mean really in and that's in football um there's a there's a recent tweet that was just circulating around of the Big 12 schools in their most recent losing season, and there are players on Oklahoma State's roster who have not been alive since Oklahoma State's had a losing season. So you we know, were talking, you know, I think it's I think it's 05. I think that was Gundy's second year um, with OSU. So they're historically good program, but not necessarily a, a national mainstay. When I when I do travel out west to see family or you know go visit a friend in Boston or whatever. And I say OSU or I Google OSU, o Oklahoma State's not the first one that pops up all the time. You know, it's Oregon State or, you know, kind of Ohio State mainly. But, uh, but yeah, but very, very good program overall. Which, fun story, I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying. And I know I told you this uh, over Twitter, but when I mentioned doing Oklahoma State uh, to my wife, she said, go Beavers. And then she quickly realized it was the wrong school. But, yes, I've... Figured since you brought up, you see lots of Oregon State or Ohio State. I thought, you know what? I'll drop this fun little story. And, you know, if she listens to this, I will take what's coming. <laughs> yeah, no, of, of course. I mean, we, I believe we are the only school in the nation besides Wyoming. That's the Cowboys. I could totally be wrong on that and be blanking here. But Wyoming uses the same kind of mascot and kind of logos that they borrow from us. But funny enough, when you can say Oregon state, we borrow Oregon states like OS interlocking OS, but just for baseball. Um, so there, there's kind of the brand similarities and that type of stuff that goes back and forth and kind of the dual purposes there that each university has. And I've lived on the West coast. I've also lived on the East coast. And when I'm Googling OSU schedule, I'm kind of re re Googling it with the different terms, you know, make sure I get the right, the right orange that pulls up here. Um, and not Oregon State, not, you know, not not 
some uh, Cowley College or whatever, but but definitely some Oklahoma State fans for sure. And you know, I mean, wrestling program's got a new new guy at the helm, and baseball is a OSU alum at the helm, just like football is with Gundy. And then basketball got a brand new coach too. So all the four, you know, you think of the four major revenue producing sports, Oklahoma State, bunch of new coaches or or alumni. Um, either way. Awesome. So tell me about some traditions, whether it's, you know, football Saturdays or you talked wrestling or other sports, baseball, as we're speaking, Florida is actually playing baseball against OSU right now. Um, what are some traditions that anyone could look out for uh, for the Cowboys? Yeah, so Garth Brooks is an Oklahoma State alum. And he, he actually was a, an Oklahoma State athlete. He was track and field athlete. But we always sing uh, friends in low places in between the third and fourth quarter in football or during the fourth quarter in football. And we also sing it during the seventh inning stretch in baseball. And, you know, I think we sing in the five, five and a half inning stretch in softball as well, too. So very proud of our Garth Brooks kind of, you know, you know, putting that man on the map. But. He's really putting us on the map on sometimes too. Um, as a, as a true cowboy, and you know, we're also I'd say that the other traditions we have is, you know, um, th- this is kind of a more uh, more personal story than anything else. But there were ten members of uh, Oklahoma State University's uh, basketball team in two thousand one that passed away in a plane crash. So every single year we do a run to memorialize those ten men who passed away in the plane crash. We do that in April to kind of commemorate them. And then other traditions that we have overall, I mean, we're a huge tailgating scene for, for football. Um, it's definitely a tradition there. Then we have the walk where all the players stay in the same hotel the night before the games and walk over and, you know, fans kind of line up down the sidewalk and, you know, or, or, you know, waving at them, taking photos, you know, and saying, let's go, et cetera. So the whole team stays together for football games the night before. Not sure how common that is. It could be super common amongst a bunch of SEC schools, but I know it's not super common in the Big 12. And then, and this is for home games specifically, of course. Um, and then, you know, other traditions we always sing, you know, our alma mater after after the game ends, you know, we're always loyal and true. Uh, there are keywords for our alma, alma, our alma mater, excuse me. And so, you know, I think those are kind of the, the main traditions. We're, we're big Pistol Pete fans, big Cowboy fans. Um, oh, and I... How do I forget? We have a huge homecoming. Um, Stillwater, Oklahoma is a town of about a little under 50,000 people. Just not enough. Basically, if, you, if you're putting down this in your head, not enough for a target, but enough for everything but a target, you know, in town. So there's there's always Oklahoma State students who would rather have a target or, you know, like me from Oklahoma City or Tulsa or whatever, but just barely not enough. We're in the summer right now in, in Stillwater. It makes sense. You know, it takes five minutes to get anywhere. You don't need whatever. It seems like the town population is like 20,000 when, when it's like 48,000. But then when students, in se- when school's in session, yeah, I mean, that adds on 30,000 plus people. And all of a sudden, then when you have homecoming added on, homecoming brings in usually around 100,000 people into Stillwater, wow. Oklahoma. Um, hotel rooms will be sold out across the city and also neighboring cities as well for when homecoming dates announced. And we do a big homecoming day parade, but also each of the fraternities and sororities partner up and then they do a whole house deck. So they, they are sticking the, you know, basically I, I did this when I was a student as well. You take the pomp, you know, the little piece of kind of tissue paper and you're sticking it through a chain, you know, some chicken wire basically with the pencil over and over and over to create a cool design. So you Google house decks or whatever in Stillwater and it's a big walk around the Friday night before games. And usually the fraternities will, put on some type of deal where it'd be a uh, one year they did a whole basketball tournament with the basketball team on their courts outside to kind of get more of the students really involved and going to games later on. Cause that kind of kicks off the whole basketball season. It's not too far away usually from homecoming um, as, as well. And then, you know, we do homecoming in hoops. Um, so we do this, this kind of glorified basically just kind of orange and black practice where basketball um, men's and women's, and then also wrestling will just basically, you know, you'll introduce each person on the team. They'll have their own walkout song, a bunch of lights go on, you're waving around glow sticks. And it's, it, it's kind of a whole homecoming lead up to that point where you announce all the winners of certain homecoming events for intramurals, all of stuff. But I mean, I've attended that several times as, a, as an alum and also 
performing with OSU as, as well. So it's uh, homecoming around Stillwater is, is a huge thing. And I'd say probably the biggest and best thing we're known for, except for our, uh, you know, our food staples. We got a couple of those too. Awesome. 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 So definitely a lot of traditions, two things. I mean, a lot of it definitely stuck out. Not too many people so far on our, uh nine previous episodes talked about how much their homecoming is uh like like you did so it's cool to hear that uniqueness but garth brooks you got to do something about lsu since garth brooks is your guy anytime i go to death valley i've got to hear colin baton rouge and you you've got to put a seat and cease and desist on those guys there's we 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 would love to what what if, if you're looking across i guess now x it used to be twitter but looking across it and trying to race to Oklahoma state. There's quite a few people who are always going Garth Brooks did a stadium tour. He went across the nation did, you know, basically just performing in stadiums. And why did he not perform in his own all modern stadium football wise? And he at one point discussed it. I think it was on a podcast or on some radio show or whatever, where the acoustics are just not set up at all in a good enough way. It just would not be a good deal. But trust me, we, we hear quite often, Hey, you know, what are we doing here? We got to have something going on that basically gets Oklahoma State fans and Garth Brooks just connected more and more at the hip. And I, and I know that's a deal. During COVID, there was a Garth Brooks, I think, documentary or some type of series uh, and he was a part of doing about his show in the background. And yeah, I mean, that's definitely a must watch TV for my dad, myself. And um, not to jump too far ahead here and what we got planned, but my dad's an Oklahoma State alum, grew up you know, really following him and Oklahoma State Cowboys, of course. But he went to OSU the same years that Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, Mike Gundy, and Garth Brooks were all on campus. So you talk about the times to be in Stillwater, Oklahoma. My dad in the 80s, when he was, yeah, granted, football games, we weren't beating OU um, or, or making a huge national national name for ourselves, except for the Heisman Trophy winner and Barry Sanders. But, I mean, we had Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders in the same backfield at one point in, in the 80s. So that those were definitely good years and stuck really firmly uh well in my dad's mind and you know I, there's plenty of layers that i could mention as well too of uh, the mason rudolph the james washington justin blackman etc but uh they haven't had a ton of pro success nothing like barry sanders of course but same point um you know th those are kind of the, the ways it's brought up and it, it's one of those where yeah we're definitely following garth brooks no matter what you know and all he's doing and only trying to support him, but also get him to go, hey, maybe just really deep dive into you're an only you're only an Oklahoma State fan. You know, you you don't really want to license out your songs to anywhere else. You know, you can't I don't think you can listen to Garth Brooks on like Spotify or whatever. So why can't you listen to him at LSU Stadium? You know, it's kind of a weird deal. Yeah, why why make him a big rallying cry song? And I'm sure we'll have some LSU fans in the comments saying, Why'd you say that? Because I can. Um <laughs> And also just one other thing that went through my head. Well, two other things, uh, you know, you talked about uh, remembering through the uh, event, the plane crash survivors and it, getting to do this show and seeing what different schools do. It's interesting. You brought that up because like when I was speaking of Virginia Tech, they do something very similar for when they had that mass shooting at Virginia Tech. So it is interesting at least seeing those bonds you know across the country that we may not think of but it's like how similar we can be you know even though different backgrounds you know different culture almost you know at the same time we still have you know ways of remem remembering tragedy and also having triumph through that tragedy so definitely and the other thing i guess i should say is you're talking about that late 80s team, which I've looked into a lot. Um, I know 89 was about the time they all left. That's the same time Emmett Smith leaves Florida. And then the first game of the 1990 season, this is just a little bit of trivia for me. Steve Spurrier makes his coaching debut at Florida. First game after Spam Tragedy, that's when that summer was when we had the Danny Rawlings killings in Gainesville. Um, so needed a big pickup brand new head coach like Mike Mike Gundy a guy returning to his alma mater uh to be head coach and first team up 
Oklahoma State Cowboys. So just a small little full circle moment. You brought up the team. I'm like, where can I insert this in? That's that's perfect. So in a way, uh, our major success and our leap, you know, from where we were to at least where we were for two decades, you guys did help us with that, whether good or bad. But so in a way, I do hold that. And I must say, as a flip of that coin, if I'm picking, I know we're going to get to talking about rivals here in a second, but if I'm having a team to cheer for, if I'm cheering Bedlam, I am cheering for the Cowboys. And that's on there, just like I will openly say, growing up, I was told to cheer for AM over over Texas, which I think I've said on a, another episode. And this way, if you see me somehow going the opposite way, you've got me on video, call me out on it. But no, I definitely enjoy Mike Gundy. And at one point he was on a short list for one of Florida's many coaching hires, at least for me. Um, Cause I love your guys offense over the last few years. But anyways, uh, speaking of rivals, let's go ahead and talk about that. Who are your rivals? I know we, I just mentioned Oklahoma, OU, what can you tell me about that? And do you have any other teams you would consider rivals? Yeah, um, you know, going forward, OU decided that they want to be a middle of the pack SEC team. So props to them, <laughs> but they have decided they they do not want to be our rival anymore. They instead want to be rivals with Texas A&M and you know compete with all those uh, recruits and then finish middle of the pack in their conference, which is money drives all. So hey, you know what? If I could make an extra ten bucks an hour you know what, might be doing the same thing. It might be middle of my profession instead of best of my profession if it means I'd get a raise. But with that being said, I mean, it is OU. I mean, OU has been the rival growing up uh, in Oklahoma City, which if you're not a geography know-it-all, then I'll explain it real quick here. Oklahoma City to Norman, which where OU plays, is about 30 minutes. Oklahoma City to Stillwater is about an hour. So, you know, you double the time going to Stillwater. So there's just a lot more fans of proximity. And also, I mean, I'm... I, grew, I was born in 93, so when I'm about in first grade, OU wins their national championship. That they, it's the last one they've won since then, but they won a national championship in 2000. So growing up, ton of OU fans all over, give me crap every single day. Remember those 02 and 03 Bedlam back-to-back -back wins? We had Les Miles as head coach very vividly and very well, and I would let every single person know we won those, and I was wearing orange all the time. But I was, I wouldn't say getting picked on, I mean, or made fun of, but I was definitely... Other OU fans who are also first graders were letting me know, hey, you guys suck, and you know, this is why. So it's always been OU. Um, now with them leaving the conference, though, it, it kind of transitions a little bit. Actually, uh, there's a the Big 12 huddle episode that comes out. Uh, it depends on when you're listening to this, but it just came out. Uh, probably by the time you're listening to this, it came out. Um, you know, what is it? Uh, June 3rd, we're recording this. It comes out tonight. But it is all talking about rivals and talking with the Cincinnati guy about the new rivals as well, too. And one thing that we went over several times is who are the new rivals of the Big 12? Who's going to be your rival? And I, I think Oklahoma State is going to be K-State. I don't know what we call the rivalry. Uh, with OU, is always Bedlam because it just is – you look up the definition of Bedlam, it's like basically chaos. And that always is the Bedlam the battle of Bedlam. And we have the OU and OSU trophies to go back and forth. And – Heck, if you look right above my head here on the, the video part of this, the Cowboys, you know, the best in Oklahoma. And this is after all the players rushed the field after we beat OU when we, I mean, barely did, it seems. Yeah, I mean, this, the the photo here is we beat OU and then we rushed the field and then Lincoln Riley, 24 hours later, is the head coach at USC. So we really just, really just started their downfall by winning Bedlam. But without taking too much more credit for OU's complete and utter downfall of their historic program and I'm sure it won't lead to any more success ever again, but being less tongue in cheek about it here, um, it, it was OU, and now I think it'll be K-State, more or less, if I had to guess. I mean, both land-grant schools, neighboring states, a lot, lot of similarities. You know, you've got previous alums who are the head coach in football, but basketball programs have been relevant with, I mean, I mean highly touted draftees. Of course, you have... Um, Oh, gosh, I cannot think of the one guy who graduated from K-State who went, like, number one overall, but Michael, uh, I'm just going to bug me for forever. But, you know, we had, we had Kate Cunningham recently. We've also had Marcus Smart. Um, we've also had Desmond Mason before, you know, too long ago from really, you know, from going back a little bit farther. But, 
yeah, I mean, I, I think that's probably it. I think it's probably going to be K State. And I know a lot of a lot of OSU fans have gone, well, why why not um, why not Texas Tech? They also have the whole gun thing, and they're yeah, you know, kind of a you know also kind of a I wouldn't say OSU is a middle of nowhere school because I mean Tulsa is an hour away and Oklahoma City is an hour away, whereas Lubbock to anywhere it, there's just it's not much. I'm not trying to trash talk Lubbock, but it's just not the same type of deal. Um, but then again. He, I think we we want to angle ourselves more into that K State scenario where we're battling with K State. You know, the stadium's named after a key guy with the university um, for both schools and basketball, baseball. Just you're talking about a lot of big programs that kind of always fight with each other and have a tough time, uh, no matter what matching up is. But I mean, really in football, I think it'll be K State for a while, and maybe also the, the idea's been thrown out of of UCF. We do for whatever reason. The, the Knights, they're not golden, but the Knights really just got our number in most sports. Uh, baseball, we beat them, and women's tennis. But besides those two, on each each one occasion, I don't think we've beat them in any other sport since they've joined the conference, and they've been in the conference for over a year. So it, it's stuff there with UCF, but maybe that's kind of a, a, a weird rival. But, you know, you kind of have both, you know, the, the mascots are kind of doing the same thing. They're both, you know fighting guys at the end of the day, but, uh, but I, I think it'll really be K state to answer your question kind of more, more solidly here. Yeah. Now I I've got to say, I really appreciate that you guys in the newest big 12 huddle talk about upcoming rivals. I tried to do that with one of our episodes of sec huddle. I guessed, or I guess hosted on because the usual host was out that, segment was not one of the best but i know like when we expanded in the sec not this time or not even necessarily when we're talking when mizzou and um AM left the big 12 to come to us but in 92 south carolina and georgia became a pretty good rivalry when south carolina and arkansas joined uh joined us and florida tennessee before 92 in that expansion wasn't much of a rivalry so i love that you look forward to that because that's how i think like okay sec just lost divisions could we end up in a rivalry with oklahoma because one of the rumors if we went to three six six scheduling was florida or was florida was going to be in a quote-unquote pod with like oklahoma Georgia and South Carolina, I think was one of the rumors. And I was like, man, if we played o- OU every year, I could see there maybe becoming a rivalry, you know, what could bud with, with those. So it'll be interesting to, to at least see what goes on. Um, but I'm just happy you brought up, Hey, with expansion comes new, um, new opportunity and possibly new fun. Um, I would say as well, we did have, or I did have uh, the guys from Cocaine Willie, the college huddle affiliate for K State on. They are good guys if you've not talked to them. I think that'd be a great collab. I'd lo- love to see between you guys. Uh, the gang there is a whole lot of fun. So uh, check them out. So I talked I about have, rivals. Uh, yeah, I have had them on at the Big 12 huddle. I've had uh, Bob Bowles be there, um, K State guy. And yeah, if you haven't watched Cocaine Willie, their intro alone gets me pumped up, you know, to really get started with the day. They got the flashing lights, music, all type of deal, a bunch of sound clips. So they they're they're doing great. Not saying not saying we're not, but uh but but yeah, they're they're definitely a lot of fun. Oh yeah, they they're a lot of fun guys. So shout out to them. And see you show up on the podcast, you never know when you're going to be shouted out in later episodes. So coming on early. More episodes for people to point to CGA Tour, Cocaine Willie, State of Atlanta coming up this one or come out the Wednesday that this is being recorded or any of our other podcasts, uh, Sound the Siren, Pause Up, and I'm Boundary Corner. And I probably could go through all nine previous episodes, as I've probably said six already, but we'll just stop there uh, for now, for now. But uh, definitely check those episodes out of why we huddle if you have not and you're listening so one last thing i want to ask you about uh oklahoma state before we get into your story i know we've talked about your dad a little bit but if you could describe in one word the culture of oklahoma state what would that be or phrase i guess yeah um you know, if it's, it's if it's phrase, then then I'd say loyal and true. 
Um, and if it's a word, I'd say, I think I'd say welcoming. I don't know of an Oklahoma State fan who is so passionately an Oklahoma State fan. They just hate viscerally some other deal or don't want to be friendly to you. There's, there, I, I do think it's kind of how you're a fan and how you're brought into it. There's not a lot of Oklahoma State fans that I know that are an Oklahoma State fan because we're winning you know, all the time. I mean, I, I wish I could say that, but we're not. I mean, I mean, back-to-back Tim Tebow National Championships is not something that's part of our history, you know. So we're we're talking about, hey, if you're an Oklahoma State fan, it, you kind of got into it for a certain reason, and it wasn't necessarily winning. So I would say that's kind of why it's more loyal and true as a fandom of, all right, well, crap, you know, we lost that one. But you know what? It's It's not the worst thing in the world. Our hopes and dreams are not all tied up in that one game. It's much more of, hey, you know what? There's – kind of mentality aspect to it and not to get much more of, you know, on my soapbox of all, all preacher kind of cow here at the end of the day, because yeah, I'm always going to paint in a bright light whenever we don't win. I mean, I, I that's why I'm going to be a fan the next game, you know I mean? Otherwise who am I? But at the same point, I think a lot of Oklahoma state fans are kind of that, that loyal and true motto. Uh, and I think that represents the university really, really well of, Hey, you know what? A player makes a mistake. Hey, you know what, man? It's all right. Like, what are we going to do? You know, we're going to, Grilly on Twitter and tried running out of town. That's just not, that's not Oklahoma State fans for, I'd say, the 90% of us. And I think that's also, uh, even with OU fans, much crap I give them, I think that's also the generally the big part of OU fans. I just also think there's a vast difference in numbers. Oklahoma State fan number wise, I think it's just, we're not the biggest fan base in the entire world. So hopefully that 90% is much more strong um, in the opinions of ah, crap. You know, we're, what if we lose our, our regional that we're hosting to, to Florida who has to win three straight to, you know, go on. Right. It's like, right. Okay. Well, yeah, it would suck, but also that's crazy for Florida to pull that off. You know, I mean, we're, I think, I think it's kind of that perspective, you know, a little bit too. For, for sure. Like, and I've got to say, I wish I could say the majority of, well, I guess the majority would work, but, there's a very loud amount of um, Florida fans whenever there's transfers. Like you're talking about, I wish them luck. I can't promise that that's uh, necessarily us. I wish it were, uh, but that's a rant that I've had on one of the SEC huddle shows, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Check out the SEC huddle. You'll find me ranting about bad behavior on Twitter. No, it's, it's too good. Yeah, I, I I have checked out a couple different episodes. The Tennessee guy is, is great. Um, he you know is yeah. a host of a bunch of those. So um, so yeah, definitely worth uh, worth checking out for sure. Oh yeah, Michael is a good guy for a Tennessee fan. Although I must say, when I guest hosted when he was out, did I take a few fun and fun pot shots at Tennessee? Yes, he was out. So I had to, uh, you know, he was asking for it. Par for the course. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You got to for sure. Um, yeah. You got to. Good natured, though. I mean, you le- you left the inmates in charge of the asylum. What can I say? But any- anyways, uh, Calvin, what can you tell me about your story as a Cowboys fan? And sounds like you're kind of born into it and you continue to be in it. But uh, for those of us uh, listening to your story for the first time, what can you tell us about it? Yeah. So the, the name itself is the CGA tour, which I, I, I might pick out a new name here at some point soon, but we'll see. But CGA is my initials. So it's just really close to PGA, but my name's Calvin Glenn Alexander. So that's where CGA comes from. And it's not an Oklahoma state direct connection. That's why, might be we'll we'll go orange power hour or something like that here in the future. But um the the podcasting deal, I started podcasting in 2015 when I started a website with a friend covering kind of all sports in Oklahoma. Got it to iTunes back when that was a whole deal of figuring out what an RSS feed is, all type of stuff. Then following semester, um, student OSU journalism, stu- journalism major. Someone was asking, hey, does anyone know how to do podcasts? We're trying to hire someone. And I was like, I'm your guy. I, I would. I was working in the student union, moving around tables and chairs. And then I figured out I could do podcasting and manage a bunch of other students, which power dynamic school, but but really having an office and being thinking you're kind of cool stuff on campus, you know, and doing a bunch of audio editing and having to move a bunch of tables and chairs around was right up my alley. So kept the podcasting going then. 
And then I graduated in 2018 um, and then wanted to kind of not, I couldn't keep the same name with OSU and all type of stuff. So kind of branched out and then that's where the CGA tour comes from and it's need a name for it. And you know, if you go back a couple months with the CGA tour or maybe even a year, you, there's a bunch of NBA talk and just cultural ball and MLB and just we're kind of all over the place there with every topic you want to hear about. But now it's much more Oklahoma State focus. Um, you know, I was born, my, my dad's an alum, my stepmom's also an alum of, of the university. So real early on, there, there was nothing but being an Oklahoma State fan. I mean, my my mom, mom uh, was born up, it was a grew up in a UCLA household, but she went to Colorado and she's not the biggest sports fan in the entire world. Um, so she was not necessarily pushing me to go to Colorado and, you know, be a big, huge Deion Sanders fan and stuff like that. I think I told her he became head coach and had to tell her a little bit more about him, even though she knew the name. So, but dad's been a huge Oklahoma State fan, took me to games when I've, you know, missing teeth, you know, and stuff like that as they're regrowing in and um, all that type of stuff. So really young, always been going to Oklahoma State fa- games, games with my dad and my parents got divorced. That was always a great bonding memory and stuff like that, too, with with my dad of kind of a great excuse of, yeah, I'd, God, I'm making good grades to go to the games, all that type of stuff is always viewed as a reward, which it was always great. Like it was the coolest thing ever to okay, it's an hour drive up there, hour drive back. We're going to chat about sports the whole entire time with my dad, kind of get that one-on-one time as you know, father-son duo. And my um, brother's two years younger than me is also, you know, big into sports at the time too. We we're kind of growing up. And then my dad remarried and has um, two younger brothers. One is actually a uh, freshman year on campus at OSU. And so he's kind of d- dives back more into Oklahoma State kind of stuff. And then the youngest one who's 17 is a huge sports fan, maybe even bigger than I am some days. And he's also following everything. He's high-fiving the players after the game, even though he's, you know, I mean, he, he's not too cool for this, you know, he's too cool for some stuff, but he's not too cool to say, hey, what's up to several players and kind of give him a good head nod or whatever, too. So we're, we're an Oklahoma State fandom as a family. There's a, a life-size Pistol Pete kind of image on the wall um in the house in the basement which when my parents move i don't know if it'll make it but yeah we're big huge oklahoma state fans born and raised um and i kind of even go back a little bit further i was born in um southern california and lived out there until i was like five or six but then when we moved back to oklahoma it's been oklahoma state fans since so um i've flown back for games whenever i've worked out of the state before for different jobs and always try to come back for homecoming every single year. always try to make it back for the, remember the 10 run as well. Um, once a year, because I have a personal family connection with that. It's my dad's the founder of the run, but oh, wow. yeah, but besides, you know, kind of all types of stuff brings into me. I met my fiance, uh, basically because she was an Oklahoma state student. Um, and so I met her. So even, even more and more connections could keep going. Um, her, her older sister, uh, and I were working together at a science museum and older sister goes, Hey, younger sister needs a job when she becomes a freshman on campus. Any ideas? And I go, yeah, I actually know. And try to get her a job and I ended up working out. And then we kind of lost touch and then reconnected during COVID. So you kind of met many of my fiance because of Oklahoma state. So, um, Very cool. you know, all, all, all great stuff, um, as, as well. So huge Oklahoma state fan overall. Um, yeah, I'm wearing, uh, wearing orange polo, but also wearing, you know, some custom, custom Nike shoes. Cause I was hoping we'd pull off the baseball win today too, but, uh, sounds like I'll have to drive home a little bit sadder than usual, but, but, you know, with that being said, I'll, I'll be keeping the spirits up cause there's always next year too. Well, I would say this is probably better for you than having to watch the rest of that game. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, I, I think so. I will say there, there's a couple of funny things that, that right now my fiance and I we actually live in Norman, Oklahoma. And so I drove, but I, but I drive to Stillwater every single day for work. And yesterday I was in Stillwater until the game ended um, as well. So there, there's been some tougher commutes and we're, we're moving before too long. It's just a very, very temporary thing for only a couple of days, basically that I'm making that commute. But, um, but I mean, when I, when I was offered the kind of job I, I have now, um, and the huge tie-in was, oh, man, I get to be in Stillwater every single day. Like, this is great. Get to go. If you get a chance, love to get treated to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and getting some sweet pepper bacon cheese fries at Eskimo Joe's or some hideaway pizza or whatever it may be. You go down to uh, there's a, a Stone Cloud Brewery. There's also um, 
we've got our own like you know i think it's it's 1890 and uh still the wheat by a, a brewery in town called iron monk as well so uh got some osu branded beer even on campus too so it's a great deal and lo- love stillwater oklahoma it's not the biggest town in the world and i don't know if i'll ever live here even though i'll always commute but i'll, I'll probably always commute back and forth here with this job about 30 plus minutes which isn't too bad but um I, i've driven way f- worse commutes before but um but yeah love stillwater love osu half my closet's orange and black so um i mean grant i also do work for the university so i need to wear some orange but but with that being said huge osu fan overall awesome no very 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 cool um and i've got to go back what kind of uh you said sweet pepper what fries sweet pepper bacon cheese fries so they are um yeah i i think i can yeah i'll I'll try to um share my screen here in just half a second but uh yeah eskimo joe's is known for known for their sweet pepper bacon cheese fries and yeah if you i think if you really google like jimmy fallon oklahoma state which can be a, a you know eskimo joe's shirt um so we we are known for our cheese fries, which I mean basically is the most amount of cheese and fries you can put together. So it's it's a good deal, but um, but yeah, it's um definitely definitely an Oklahoma State thing. That's a lot of fun here. So uh, so yeah, it's it's really really good food at the end of the day. So yeah, I'm, I'm sharing the screen now. Um, you know, if you're watching this, of course, on YouTube, because why wouldn't you be? But um, but yeah, that's it's kind of the. Got some uh, some really really good food here in Stillwater for sure. Yeah, uh, that definitely looks really awesome. So, uh, Eskimo Joe's uh, free advertising here on why we huddle. Uh, that sounds awesome. So, I've got to ask, uh, what are some of your favorite memories with Oklahoma State? I know you talked about driving with your dad. Uh, to and from games would that be it or what are some of your other favorite memories i guess yeah so um but that's been asked this a couple times so now I've, I've got the answer kind of fully ready but um several jobs have had a vest you know kind of the same what's your favorite sports memory and and from what i do for a living that's kind of the biggest thing i have to tell people on the phone and it is 2011 oklahoma state wins uh in, in Big 12 did not have a championship game for a, for a little bit. There was a, some gap years where there was not a championship game. There was not a North and South division um, and stuff like that. So in 2011, Oklahoma State wins the Big 12 championship by just winning Bedlam, beating OU. And that's my senior year of high school. I'm going to the game with my dad and my uh, one of my younger brothers. And we rushed the field. We won 44 to 10. Uh, tear down the goalpost, throw them out of the stadium. And that is by far and away. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking to me, you know, I mean, I'm in high school, but like, it just felt like I was just so much younger overall than, I mean, I'm, it's kind of half my age or close to it, but it, it was just the most excited. It was one of those games too, where kind of from the get go, I wasn't worried if we were going to win or lose. And it was just pure bliss of excitement, truly just high fives after every single touchdown Growing up with my dad and how much he means to me as a person, as a man, and kind of a role model, there's nothing better than, than watching a game with him. Um, and then also seeing us win and beat the arch nemesis in OU. And yep. last time we had beat him was 03. So, and last time we beat him, my dad and I were together watching the game too. And, you know, it's about to be a freshman in college the next year. So there's just so many things that went into that one game of, of time that we had together watching it. And that has to be my favorite sports memory by far and away. And, you know, a close, close second is when we, you know, beat KU and I was working for the university as the kind of the DJ doing all the basketball stuff when I was uh, um, interning in college and we rushed the court because we beat KU. Um, so, so that's a close one there too. With Marcus Smart on the team, but, but yeah, definitely that, that Bedlam win in 2011 where, I mean, Gundy, the head coach of Oklahoma State football, gets, he gets some crap for playing a little timid in those Bethlehem games. It's almost like it's too close for comfort. He remembers losing to OU himself. I think he lost all four, all three or four years. He was a starter and he kind of gets a little bit more, you know, kind of, kind of worried if he's going to win or lose and gets a little bit less ambitious in his game plan and his game calling. If there is a knock on him, that'd probably be it. But that was the game where heck no one's beaten us. And in my mind, 
we should have been playing the national championship game a couple weeks later, but instead we play Stanford and we end up beating Andrew Luck. But that that's a year where that's a storybook year. We we beat Andrew Luck, we beat Robert Griffin the third, we beat Ryan Tannehill. Um and oh gosh, who's the and we beat Nick Foles. We played Arizona earlier on in the year in non-conference. So we, we beat so many NFL quarterbacks that year and was just kind of looking back at it, it's like, man, that was one of the best seasons of college football I've ever seen for for a university and a, and a team to have. And I wouldn't say it was like a one in none year, like, oh, that came out of nowhere. Because the year before we had Des Bryant, and that actual right. year, Des Bryant is on the cover, and we beat Georgia. Um, and then I don't know if anyone remembers this too much, but basically Des Bryant met with an agent, and NCAA investigators asked him, or he, he met with the player. I think he might have met with Deion Sanders, if I remember this correctly. And this before, this in 2010, 2011. And, uh, and yeah, basically Deion Sanders just kind of gives him some advice as a person to person might've bought him dinner or something. I don't think so though. It's back when incident was really scrutinizing guys and he kind of lies about meeting with somebody. Yeah. And that's, that's where he messed up. He lied about what he did and sure enough, NCAA says he can't play the rest of the season and it doesn't matter. We end up winning everything we can, except for a game, uh, except for a Friday night game against Iowa state where it's still borderline if that field goal went in or not, it, you know, to end the game. And I'm always going to say it went in, and I understand those who say it doesn't. So it, it's – we're 10-plus years out from that game, so I got to let it go. Yeah. I mean, that's the fun of college football. I mean, I'm sure if I think about it, and I can tell you quite certain what games I'd point to and say, yeah, this, this, you know, that call, that impacts games. Yep. <laughs> For sure. But that's that's the fun of sports, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that, that's what we keep coming back to. That's why, you know, like, why are you recording your podcast every week? What's kind of the connection. And for me, it's, Hey, you know what? I love talking about Oklahoma state sports overall. Like that, that is the, the hour or two a week to talk Oklahoma state football, basketball, baseball, softball, wrestling, golf, tennis, just really get however long in the tooth equestrian, just keep going, you know, as much as I want to, um, you know, the meat judging team. I mean, there's just really how far can I keep going on about, you know, talking about Oklahoma State sports in some form or fashion. And it's always, always fun, too, to kind of have a little bit of debate between, you know, Fiance's family is big OU fans and my family is big OSU fans as well. And we won Bedlam last year, and that's the last time we're going to play Bedlam as part of the conference for who knows how long um, in football and give OU fans all the crap I can because – I know that's the last one for a while, right? So, right. Um, you know, always the kind of fun there, but it's always all just tongue in cheek. You know, I mean, it's just just right. just having fun, excitement. Seeing the day, my dad's always told me whenever I've gotten, I got used to get really, really upset, really, really down when Oklahoma State would lose when I was in high school, and definitely when I was in college too. And it was always, hey, there's a bunch of guys from this state and this state who are just happen to be wearing orange this week, you know, or wearing orange for these four years, whatever. But then when they you know, when Dan Bailey's the kicker, the Dallas Cowboys, and also then a couple years later, CeeDee Lamb's the star wide receiver. Do I now hate the Dallas Cowboys because they have an OU player? No. You know, do I love them because they have an OSU player? Yeah. So, you, you know, you just kind of right. fall in each team here and there and um, being excited when they win, when they lose, just, you know, trying to shrug it off the most I can. But uh, I hope I've been a little more mature now than I used to be about that, too. You know, I think that's a journey for a lot of us because, yes, I've definitely been there plenty. Um, yeah. And then meanwhile, and maybe it's just because Florida's, you know, having back to back to back lo losing seasons and hasn't had the best, you know, decade plus stretch after two great, mostly great de decades, you know it's forced me to really get over that when I've, you know, gone and sat in a stadium watching uh, the orange or black of Oregon state beat us. And we're kicking a field goal to keep uh, NCAA record streak alive down 30 to nothing. But boy, did I celebrate that streak and it really rolled off my back uh, losing that bad. I will tell you, probably 15 years earlier would not have gone down so so easily uh but yeah for for sure now uh you know you've listed all sorts of players who would be your favorite um oklahoma state player if you had to choose one in any sport 
any sport. You know, I I think the favorite Oklahoma State player is uh is is James Washington. And for those who don't know, James Washington won the Blitnikoff for Oklahoma State. He's a wide receiver. He went and got drafted in the third or fourth round. I can't remember which one. Um with the, for the Steelers, but basically it's just kind of a it's kind of a personal connection as well as how good the player is. I used to be an intern for Oklahoma State Athletics, and one of the things we did is we had a huge fan day event where all the players do autographs, but only for a certain amount of hours. And I was the guy who one year just had to tell fans, you know, wear, wear some glasses and some earpiece and look like I'm, you know, the private eye security detector guy, but I was really just putting on airs because I was all in college trying to show up everyone, right? But um, but I was the guy who had to, you know, listen to the earpiece. My boss said, hey, all the players got to leave. You've got to be the bad guy, right? You're not going to have the players say, hey, guys, got to go. You're going to have them said someone else just step in out of nowhere who's me. And when I did that, um, you know, James Washington looked at me and he goes, I'm signing five more. I was like, all right, sounds good. You know, hey, I'm not telling you anything different. And then after that, he goes, hey, man, do you want anything signed or anything at all? You got, you know, uh, you got to be a huge OSU fan. What year are you? And he just kind of took a couple minutes just to kind of ask me as actual, actually as a person, you know, who I am and stuff like that. And he's also just a really stand-up guy overall. Uh, he's never said anything bad. He's, I think, I'm, I know he's now out of the NFL, and he and I are around the same age, not the same age. So at 30, you're already out of the NFL. It's kind of not the greatest when you want to blit in a cough. But then again, some of the blit cough winners have done nothing, and some are, some have done everything. So you know, don't want to say it's, you know, a good or bad thing, but, um, but, but Washington is a guy I've always really liked, really followed. And if it's not Washington, then maybe it's Marcus Smart. He and I were, uh, he went to Oklahoma State only for two years, but he did go for two years. And, you know, I, I know he plays the Celtics, which, you know, he played for Celtics for a while, which I don't really have a tie to. And I placed the Grizzlies, which still no, no ties whatsoever, but it, always fun to root for Oklahoma State guys who are in the pros who, Smart did not have a uh, clean sheet when he graduated from Oklahoma State as far as instance with fans or other things. If you, you Google it, you, you know what I'm talking about. But he, he for, I think for the most part, is, uh, is a guy where you look up Oklahoma State and Marcus Smart, and it, it's all good things, you know. But um, there's a couple of things that are bad here and there, and he did get suspended and stuff. But yeah, he's also just a guy who was really hard worker, and he also plays basketball kind of the way I would – Wish I could play basketball, you know, be smart, good on defense instead of being in turnstile every time someone plays against me. So um, it's probably James Washington and, and Marcus Smart or Marcus Smart, you know, for going uh, that way, too. Awesome. No, that's a very cool story about Washington and taking his time. Um, so for the future, what are some things that you're hoping to see? Uh, you know, whether it's just a special memory you make in the future like how you're talking about going to games with your dad being a special memory what's something in the future you want to see whether it's something like like that or whether it's something to do with you know any of the major sports success what's something that calvin would like to see in the future from oklahoma state i, I would like us to see us just be the leaders in the house in the big 12 i i think Every single year, there's always, um, and this is really in football because in basketball, I think we're a little ways off right now. I just don't basketball in the Big Twelve is so tough. Every single night feels like there, there's no nights off. There's not no disrespect to certain teams here, but you know the Arizona States of the world in, in football, we're not playing them in basketball and going, oh, that's an easy one. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's there's just not Big Twelve schools in basketball that are that easy. So in football, I, I think, and also in football, we're we're pretty darn good. We've had a good track record. I think we're in the spot to be a really good uh, football team. But like this year, certain polls have us as the seventh best odds to win the Big 12. And then you look at all all the guys we have returning, every single offensive lineman's returning, our quarterback's returning. We have, I think, the best running back in the nation. But if not the consensus best, we definitely have arguably the best running back in the nation, several good wide receivers. But yeah, we're we're not in the top half, or I guess seventh is kind of the top half now. But you know, we're not seen as one of the top three odds wise to win the Big 12. And there's always a knock on Gundy. And if you're uh, really into betting, I, I think you'd go, you know what? If I just bet the Oklahoma State over every single year, I'd be making money. And I, I'm pretty sure that's true by far and away. I think it's true, actually. But I uh, it would really love to see us just be, okay, hey, there's all right. 
Big 12 going forward and, you know, in football, it's all right. There's K-State, Oklahoma State, and Utah, you know, for example. But but we're always talked about as being one of, if not the best team in the Big 12 in football every single year. That'd be my hope, goal, and mission that we're not playing in two Big 12 championships in the past five, you know, past three years, but we, we've lost both. You know, I mean, that there's just more to it of we got to add much more accolades because we have – Percentage wise, we've done a lot in football. We are the second best team in the Big Twelve percentage wise and win losses um, since since Gundy's been head coach, and that goes on almost twenty years now. So th- there's a lot of, of oh well, yeah. I always hear about Texas and I always hear about you know OU. Well, now both of them are gone. I would really love for Oklahoma State just to take over the Big Twelve in football and. It, and not necessarily even to be that much of a conversation of who else is that good, but uh, it's Oklahoma State, and then who else you know is going to be irrelevant that year because Gundy's uh, he's younger than my dad. He's not sixty yet, and he's seems to be still wanting to coach. Who knows? Maybe he'll retire in two years. But if he doesn't, I, I would love to see him stay on, of course, and and that be kind of the the success bar is that we're always in the conversation to win the Big Twelve every single year, and it's not a up and down or, or two good years and then one, okay, we're seven and six. What happened? Type of deal right. either. Awesome. Yeah, that's uh definitely achievable. And if you're in that conversation every year, like you hope to see with a 12 game playoff, you never know what could happen. So um as I've said to a few people and as it looks for Florida for the upcoming bit, it's like, you know, if we can make the 12th, who knows? You may get several ball, balls your way. Um, so definitely good luck to you guys. So as we wrap up here, Calvin, where can people find you? Yeah, so I'm at the CGA Tour on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, of course, as well. Um, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. But the CGA Calvin Glenn Alexander Tour um, is, is the deal. Awesome. And of course you can catch why we huddle on the college huddle. And again, thank you for coming on the show, telling us all about Oklahoma state before we go, there's almost a running gag on my Gator show, the Gator truth, Florida football podcast, where, um, whenever I end up needing to have someone ask a question, I'll have my cousin, who is my cousin but uh i'll read his name off he lives in another state so it'll be will from south carolina which now he technically has crossed the river and lives in augusta georgia he lived in north augusta south carolina and he's like "Ah, don't call me will from south carolina i'm like okay well you want to be will from georgia no not at all because he's a florida guy right and anyways, it's been kind of funny. I've noticed this probably 20 minutes ago. So if you watch this back for anyone who has been watching this and been like, why is he randomly smiling, you know, or giggling at parts he shouldn't? It's because you look very similar to uh, Will from South Carolina from my from my show and some of the same mannerisms. So I noticed it. And once I saw it, I just couldn't unsee it. So thank you for providing that little bit of entertainment for me as well. Oh, you're welcome. No, I've, uh, I've been told I always mimic somebody that somebody's seen before in life. And, and previously I've got experience being an announcer for Oklahoma state softball and soccer and, and, uh, and then men's and women's basketball too. So if you're trying to listen to the CGA tour, I always say it's the po- best podcast, best sounding podcast you haven't heard yet. I, I think the production quality is something I, yeah, I got that uh got that journalism um video production degree for a reason. So hopefully hopefully audio quality is a little bit better than some of the other podcasts out there, especially some of the other Oklahoma State podcasts out there too. I'm trying to try to do my best there with the uh the materials and information and uh knowledge I have. Definitely. Well, you've sounded phenomenal with with us. Um again, thank you. It's been very educational. And for everyone listening, thank you for joining us and for following the show for 10 episodes. Hopefully, hopefully we have a hundred more. Uh, continue to listen in and continue to discover why we huddle. Yeah.